So originally this was a great setup. I was happy with it. I could fill up three buckets at one time. Um, each of the barrels has their own shutoff valve, as you can see. And they're upside down so that I can get every inch of water. Because when you live in Central Texas, it doesn't rain very often. As you can see, they're all empty. The other ones are empty. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I got tired of hauling the water all the way over. So I started checking out YouTube and figuring out how I could get the water to the other side of our house where the garden is way over you can't even see it from here it's over on the other side of that pergola so I hooked up this hose to that line which I can also shut off and just disconnect the hose so that these can be so that these four rain barrels can be completely separate from those two rain barrels down there or they can all be connected I have to have them connected so that I can get this water over there onto the garden. Plus when these are full they act as sort of like a reservoir and then I put this hose on and it keeps those filled down there which is closer to the pump which will give me better water pressure. And everything's level. Like I leveled it off the house. Well I didn't put those ones as high on purpose because they're ugly and I didn't want them as visible. You know I'm trying to be nice to the neighbors like behind us and stuff. I don't want those rain barrels in their face. I do plan on painting them brown anyway. To, it cuts down on algae. You can see this very first one I put it. You can see the algae inside, although it's gotten a lot better because they're bone dry and have been for like a week. So anyway, up on top I have it vented because if you don't, um, pressure will build up inside the barrels and you won't get any, the water won't come out fast. So I also have that as a shutoff valve so that during a rainstorm I can shut that off and if these are filling too quickly on the first barrel, then it also can fill in on the top as well as on the bottom. Because these, are, because it's on a manifold system, it'll level out across, but it just might be slower than if, the, if we have a really good rainstorm, that first barrel fills up really fast. So, and if it's, if it gets too full and these are still trying to fill up, the water just goes back up and down the downspout as normal. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so I can hook this up to those for when I need the water down there. And when I don't, and I just need this to be a reservoir, I can disconnect it and turn it off down there. So this line runs down here to these two rain barrels, which again, they're ugly, so I put them down low, but I did a much better job on the manifold. I did it underneath and through the brick so it doesn't stick out. I wish you can see that pipe behind goes over here and that also has a shutoff valve so I can shut this off if I need to. And uh, this diverter that we got at Walmart I like much better. It's uh, Earthminder or something. It went in, Dan put that one in in like 10 minutes. The other one took us forever and I think this one does a better job. But again I did the venting system here and um, I can shut it off too if I want to. So that goes behind these bushes. The pipe goes around our deck. I need to do a better job of hiding it. I'll paint it or something. Behind these bushes. And because this is all still lower, see and it goes over to here. So because this is all still lower than the rain barrels, the water rushes through this pipe. When I open up that, that um, spigot that was over there next down on the ground. When I open that up, this line fills pretty quickly. So, and the way the pump works, as long as there's water reaching here, it will pull that water through. Okay, so let me take the lid off the pump so you can actually see it. I have this on to protect it from rain because it's not completely weather weatherproof, but it can take a little. So it's a sure flow 2088343435. It's uh, three gallons per minute. It's an agricultural water pump. And I bought it um, from Northern Tools for, I don't know, it was like $80. Okay, and this is an inline filter for it because, you know, there's a lot of gunk and everything in the rain barrel. So you have to have a filter. And then I can, when this gets dirty, I can just unscrew this part, 
clean it out and put it back on. Okay, so here's the battery. It's just a little UPS battery, um, 8 amp hour. I just picked up the local battery store. You can get them almost anywhere, though, really. I think you can even get them at Radio Shack. On top, this is a, it's by a company called Little Fuse. It's a 15 amp circuit breaker because that's what the pump said to use. It says it right on it, to use a slow blow fuse. If you can't find a slow blow fuse, then you can get this um, circuit breaker. So it's hooked from the positive of the battery to the battery post. It's marked battery and auxiliary on the post. You just can't see it. it's too little. Positive of the battery to the um, battery post on the circuit breaker. And then um, from the auxiliary to the center post of the switch. I got this switch at Radio Shack. It was almost $5 and then I saw it at Walmart for like two bucks. I put the off on on there so I wouldn't get confused. And then the um, top post of this switch goes to the, you can't see it, but the toggles underneath here, it turns it off and on. If you he, listen, you might be able to hear the pump go. So, um, that way it's not going to get water under there or whatever. So I have a switch to just keep it off, to keep all the electricity off of it. So the positive goes from this post on the on off switch down through a little hole right here. We drilled in down this wire comes out underneath and to the pump. And then the negative from the pump goes back up and goes to the negative of the battery. And then I have this in here. This cable goes out this hole up here up to the solar panel. It's up on top of the roof. So these just get hooked right over the connections. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but I'll try. They get hooked right over the, I, that's why I put the flat metal connectors and didn't put insulated connectors so that I could still hook up the solar panel. Oh, and real important on the solar panel, I specifically bought one that had a built-in diode because if you don't, it will drain the battery at night when it's not getting sun, it'll, it'll drain the battery. So this is a 10 watt, which you don't need a charge controller for, but if it doesn't have a diode in it. So just make sure you don't buy a cheap solar panel off of like eBay or something that doesn't have a diode. It's got to have a diode or else it's just going to drain your battery. Okay, so the pump isn't weatherproof, so I do have to keep it covered. I don't know what I'm going to do long term, but for right now, I just use this little um, flower box. It actually works pretty well. And I have, I have a couple of rocks under here and I have it screwed down to this board. The pump is actually screwed to the board. I don't even see them under there. And I, so I have a couple of options. When I don't have rain or water in my barrels like right now, I just hook that hose to this hose, pull it over the garden, and if the rain barrels are full, then all that water, I open up that ho the valve over there on the other side of the deck, and then the water rushes through here, and it comes to here, and I hook this hose up to the pump. See, so I have quick connects on both sides. Hook this end up to the pump, and I can pull that over to the garden. So over here at the garden, I have my nifty water barrel. So I can bring that hose from over there, and I can hook it to this spigot and fill from the bottom up, or I can go in that, that hole that was in the top and just pour the water in that way if I wanted to. So, and then around back, I, you can see this is brown. It's because these were syrup barrels and there was still syrup in there. It's, and it's very concentrated. It's gonna take a couple barrels before that goes away, but it, there's molasses in it. It's actually good for the plant. So I just, I don't care, I leave it. I'm not gonna waste water rinsing out something that's not gonna hurt anything. So I have it plumbed underneath. You saw the one that goes out to the front and then there's a T under there to come out this way. And then I have this so that I know how much water I have in it. And then this spigot is gonna be hooked up. When I get the drip system all set up, I'm gonna have the drip system go to the garden. So 